I think what's interesting with this is sort of the context, that this is a later reprint, 1984 reprint, and then associ it's associated with the cabin, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like I said, I, having it saying it was framed that year, I'm sure what happened was he framed it, put it on display, talking about the issue of slavery and the John Brown's case being involved with the Underground Railroad. So, what is 1884? The frame is 1930? 38. 38. And I know there was a, something like that where there was a creation around the 1880s as well. Which families would walk in the Missouri? The ones that the best cooks and so forth? I didn't know that. I thought it was a cartoon for that time period. It's later, anyway. It's 20, 30 years down the road. I've had people remembering it and thinking about it. And they start to write that history. And, and that's what we kind of get into as well. It's not just talking about what happened, but how did people remember that time? Mm -hmm. Especially at that time when you know, the war's been over. Slavery has ended. What side were you on and how were you involved with that? And so you start to get some of these stories. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were helping escaping slaves. We were a part of that. We were against slavery before. It, it was over. Yeah. Well, and I, I think it's. We were actually just uh, one of the women who just right up there right now. Um, brought a bunch of things that are related to the GAR in, mm. in Lynchfield, oh, yeah. Nebraska. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely popular culture and individual histories. It's just crazy how big a role it plays mm. throughout their lives. It looks like the artist is G I L L A N. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. I could probably figure out where he. See, I haven't been able to. And, and that was part of the problem is you just have that note on the back that there was no other documentation with it. Uh, you know, what the work saying yeah, this is where it exactly came from, this is who owned it, this is who owned it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, page picture printed in 18. Okay, train 1938. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing when you, well, you know, when you deal with stuff, people collect it. Every day, there's no context. And it's, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's what we've been going through with the accession process. A lot of it we didn't know where it came from. But we were able to donate quite a few items to use that to your city, the state store, so I didn't even acquire it. So oh, good. Uh, and they were really, the state store website was really interested in one piece. It's like, well, I think we would take it, but you know where it came from. And I'm like, mm. I don't. I'm sorry, I don't. There wasn't any paperwork describing it. So I'm glad this is where it came from. Who uh, donated it? This is the type of person they were. Yeah. Nobody necessarily thinks about writing that down. That's like when we're doing the reenacting outside. It's like, these guys just sit down and say, hey, I brushed my teeth this morning, and this is how I did it. And then, or I put these types of clothes on, and this is how I did it. Right. <laughs> I worked uh, at the Historical Society for a while. Sort of this period of collectors and amateur historians just were voracious in their collecting and hit up everybody they knew and didn't write anything down. Yeah. Um, which they didn't mind, but <laughs> is huge problems for us now. Well, yeah. Get a work around it. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Yeah.